Hello, my lovely Calimaris. This is Calimara here. Today, I'm going to be telling you guys about Hetalia, my experience with Hetalia and the fandom, and how it got me into pursuing digital art. We have a lot to talk about today, so if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't really care. I don't like it when people boss me around, so I'm not gonna boss you around. If you feel like I'm worth subscribing to or following on Instagram and Twitter, you'll follow and subscribe. I'm just happy to be here. Anyway, the reason I decided to make this video was because recently, Indonesia just became canon in the Hetalia universe, and I won't lie to you, at one point of my life, that was like my dream. Little child Kelly's dream was to one day see her country become canon in an obscure ass Japanese webcomic slash anime series that she can't even watch because Indonesia had horrific Wi Fi connection. So let's just say his reveal was a huge deal for me, and I'm sure for many other Indonesian Hetalia fans as well. But before we get any further, I'll quickly explain to you guys what Hetalia is and what it's all about. In short, Hetalia is an over-the-top allegory of political and historic events as well as more general cultural comparisons. Basically, think country humans, but with human character designs instead of flags. The characters represent general traits uh, commonly shared by people in a country's culture. For example, the British personification likes tea and believes in magic. The American personification is loud and has a hero complex, and the Japanese personification is overly polite and likes being a shut-in. The series started off as short webcomics created by Himaruya Hidekaz that mostly revolved around the characters' interactions with each other during certain world events and is really nonsensical and satirical. It got popular enough to be adapted into an anime which has undergone a few name changes over the years starting with Hetalia Axis Powers, followed by Hetalia the Beautiful World, and now Hetalia World Stars. But because the comics were just a bunch of slice-of-life skits, the anime didn't really have much to go off of in terms of story, and also the animation quality was really bad when it first started. A single episode was basically just a bunch of skits stitched together, and it was only about 5 minutes long, super fast-paced, none of it made any sense, and the characters yelled a lot. Natalia doesn't have an overarching plot or a clear timeline, it just jumps from one time period to the next depending on which group of characters and their historical significance Mr. Himaruya wants to focus on. And just to illustrate how absolutely bonkers and nonsensical this show is, uh, America has an alien roommate named Tony and Britain owns a flying mint colored bunny named flying mint bunny that only he can see. Why? I don't know. Oh, and also, while I was trying to figure out what America's alien roommate's name was, I found out that apparently Hetalia is also banned from South Korea, which if you've seen this series, you wouldn't be surprised. Now, with me explaining that, you're probably thinking, Kelly. That sounds like an absolute garbage fire. I cannot believe this series has lasted for over 10 years. To which I say, you are absolutely correct, but I still love it with all my heart and I'm really glad it's still going. I can't really speak for everyone, but for me personally, I like that it actually got me interested in world history and other cultures. Like, Sure, I had to learn about it in school, but I didn't give a freak about all these old dead guys with really long names involved in all these wars that you had to know where it happened and how long it went on for. But then, everything changed when Hetalia attacked. Actually, 
putting faces to the countries and seeing them act out the stuff that was happening actually helped me remember all of that info better. And more than that, it made me interested in the stuff that was happening. For me, Hetalia was a platform where people got to showcase their culture from different parts of the world. They would draw characters in traditional clothing, write stories about specific historical events from their country, and show off everything that made their country great, like their signature landmarks, signature food, signature clothes, and their country's contribution to the world. It was all really interesting and fun, and it got me to see those countries for the people that lived in them the stories they had to tell, rather than just the name and the flag. But let's all be honest, the real reason why Hetalia popped off was the attractive characters and fan service. See, the appeal that Hetalia had is that it was an anime made up of almost exclusively pretty boys, and if there was one thing that girls on the internet liked, it was pretty boys, and then shipping those pretty boys together. This can get a bit iffy, because aside from the fandom attacking each other because they ship different characters, it also uses any and all real-life historical events and diplomatic relations between those two characters or, or countries to fuel their ship. This leads to serious historical revisionism where oppressive and devastating events such as colonization or actual freaking genocides are completely trivialized or even portrayed as romantic or funny despite the human suffering that was endured during those times. It's fine if you just look at it as Haha, <laughs> characters arguing with each other and having relations as characters do, but when you start bringing real life into it, devastating events, and trying to justify it to make this character you like not seem as bad, that's when it starts crossing into the Lorax fandom and uh, the whole thing with the Onesler. It's just always been a slippery slope because of the fact that those characters are closely tied to the culture and history of an entire nation. But then the series is known to brush aside serious events to make the characters sympathetic to a fault, and the fandom taking Hetalia's representation of history as fact without doing any of their own research. But the concept of these country personifications on its own, in my opinion, was really quite a brilliant idea. Uh, there's a good bit of lore behind it, and Himaruya also enjoyed reinventing his characters into different versions to keep things fresh, like gender bend, uh, making cat versions, mochi versions, and 2P characters, which uh, is its own little rabbit hole, but I'm not gonna go too much into it because that's not the focus of this video. However, if you guys are interested in learning more about that and all this knowledge that I don't know what to do with, I can definitely make a follow-up video about it. Now, another big component of Hetalia was the OCs. At the time, not many countries have been represented in Hetalia, as the stories mostly centered around the Axis powers and allied forces, but the series was also gaining a wider international audience that lived outside of those countries. That meant a lot of people were making OCs of their own country, and that's where most of the cultural exchange occurred. At the time, there was really only one sketch even remotely related to an Indonesian character, but that turned out to be a person Himaruya met while he was in Indonesia. A lot of people still based their Indonesias on it though, and some people also decided to make male Indonesia OCs and write yaoi fix about him. So many yaoi fix! Um, but 
my biggest pet peeve with this was that they always made him the bottom. Even though Indonesia is the fourth largest country in the world, has its own martial art, which is considered to be one of the deadliest martial arts in the world and one of the most feared special forces in the world, and might I add, a long history of badassery under our belt, and yet he's the submissive bottom. I absolutely refuse. And so, when this glorious man was revealed and radiated the strongest dom energy I have ever seen in a Hetalia character, I was on my knees, thanking Mr. Himaruya for his generosity. I mean, just look at this man. Look at him and then look me in the eyes and tell me he wouldn't be able to bench press a Sumatran elephant. You can't. I mean, personally, I was really hoping that Indonesia would be a woman because Indonesia has a lot of female heroes who actually fought in wars, built schools, and stood up for women's rights. And I just really liked the idea of the Indonesian personification being a strong, independent woman. Plus, our traditional clothes for women have a lot more diversity and are super iconic and it would give artists a lot of opportunities to actually showcase that. But it is what it is and I like that this Indonesia is a himbo with massive mommy milkers so I shall accept him. So in this piece, I decided to draw him with my old Indonesia OC because of course I made a Hetalia OC. What do you mean? And she's passing on her moon orchid to him as my way of passing the baton to this new character. The moon orchid was pretty much the trademark for all Indonesia OCs because it's one of our three national flowers. So I'm really glad that Himaruya ended up actually incorporating that flower in his design. Out with the old, in with the new. I'm not gonna talk too much about her, but if you're interested in her story and my design concept for her, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll make a video about that too. We don't really know much about this Indonesia yet, but his character sheet says he's laid back and friendly but can be bashful at certain times. I think that's pretty much every Indonesian ever, like, oh, we're all pretty bad uh, public speakers I think. Um, we don't really like going up on stage and uh, <laughs> I'm getting nervous just thinking about it. But definitely, Indonesians are one of the most friendliest people in the world, so that's pretty accurate, I think. He starts conversations with, where are you going, which, yeah, if you've been to Indonesia or have lived in Indonesia, yeah. He's also scared of the dark, which makes sense because Indonesia has a whole stockpile of scary ghosts that will fuck you up. There's actually a really cool indie horror game made by an Indonesian game development company called Dreadout, which is basically all about the scary supernatural creatures we have in our folklore. I think it's really cool. I constantly watch playthroughs of it because I'm too much of a coward to play it myself, but I highly recommend you guys check that out. Back to Mas Indo though, um, his catchphrase is Tira Papa, which basically means this is fine, and I love that. I guess the only thing I would sort of nitpick is the fact that he has a sweet tooth because I think liking spicy foods would be more accurate. Um, Indonesians love their spice, let me just say, but it's, it's a minor thing. I think he's off to a good start and I'm really looking forward to actually catching up with Hetalia and seeing more of him. To be honest, I was actually quite surprised to see him wearing a police uniform. I was half expecting him to be in the old Patriot uniform, but I guess Hetalia World Stars is set in a more modern setting, so it makes sense that he'd be wearing a more modern uniform. I'm not complaining though. 
Indonesian police uniforms are, well, they're quite flattering, shall we say. And I just love how big he looks in it as well. It looks like um, his buttons are about to... <laughs> they're gonna pop off, man. And I love that. So, how did Hitalia get me into art? Well, to be honest, it wasn't actually the series itself that inspired me to take that plunge, rather, a fan comic. When I first got into the Hetalia fandom, I started following people who had Indonesia OCs on DeviantArt. I remember being so invested in this particular OC that I actually wrote a whole ass wiki article for Indonesia because I saw that it wasn't nearly as comprehensive as the other OCs and I got competitive. For the first time, I was actively researching our history and culture and that made me appreciate my country. Thankfully, I never got into the mainstream Hetalia fandom, but I did fall into this niche that was spearheaded by a deviant art creator called Dinosaurus Gede. I like to call this niche the C Hetalia fandom, or Southeast Asian Hetalia fandom. You see, Dinosaurus Gede made her own absolutely legendary webcomic series called Maaf, based off of the original Hetalia series. It's centered around the colonization of Indonesia by the Dutch VOC, and later expanded to the colonization of Malaysia, the Philippines, Brunei, Singapore, and even Australia and New Zealand. This comic is one of the best things I have ever read, and I kid you not, this was how I passed my history classes in school. It still holds up beautifully to this day and I highly recommend you guys check it out because unlike the original Hetalia, this comic has an actual storyline and is super educational and touches on subjects like racism, white supremacy, ethnocentrism, and cultural suppression. Plus, the art is absolutely gorgeous. It's always so detailed and accurate and the story is really touching and empowering, especially if you're a person of color like I am. The series is pretty much finished by now, and by finished I mean it's not being updated anymore and Dino has moved on to other projects, so now is a great time to read it. I know some people were shocked when I said Hetalia is educational, and that's mostly because at this point when I think Hetalia, Ma'af is what comes to mind, and I've always had positive experiences with that community. Ma'af for me was my artistic awakening. For the first time ever, I was drawing comics. I never thought I would draw comics because I thought it was just a lot of unnecessary work, but there I was. And on top of that, I was also writing stories, designing OCs, and I even managed to get my OC featured in one of Dinosaurus Gede's works, which was, bruh, it was my greatest achievement as a child. Dinosaurus Gede got me to pay more attention to our traditional clothes and I started learning to draw and write stories like she did. See, Ma'af inspired me to make an Indonesia OC and helped me realize just how special my culture is and how much I've taken it for granted. Now, I could talk your ear off with all the trivia I've accumulated about my home country over the years, but I'll spare you the details. Essentially, I was really annoyed that no one even knew about Indonesia or where we were on the map, even though we had so many natural wonders and historical sites listed on UNICEF, and despite the fact that we have one of the highest numbers of unique flora and fauna, traditional dishes, clothing, architecture, musical instruments, and weaponry in the world. Oh, and not to mention, we also founded the Non-Alignment Movement with our Asian-African conference that was meant 
to oppose colonialism and neo-colonialism. And it, Indonesia is also a G20 country alongside the UK, US, Australia, and Japan. And yet, people think Bali is its own country. And that will never not piss me off. So I had all this information and I didn't know what to do with it. To kid Callie, the fact that her country wasn't getting the recognition it deserved was a huge problem that was basically the biggest crisis of her life. So in my little child brain, I thought, well, if no one else is gonna be super obnoxious about promoting Indonesia in this subscure community, then I will. So what did I do? I made an Indonesia Ask blog on Tumblr, of course. And this, my friends, was how it all began. Back in the early 2010s, there was a huge Ask blog community on Tumblr where people would roleplay as characters or OCs from their favorite franchises and answer questions by onlookers or interact with other accounts from that same fandom. So. I made my Indonesia OC, filled out a character profile, learned how to code my own blog, and away I went. Now, the thing with the Hetalia characters and OCs uh, is that the character concepts, be it design or personality, are meant to represent specific facets of the country and the culture that they're personifying. Obviously, the more accurate they were to the culture, the better. In Hetalia, this can be expressed either by a physical design trait like an accessory, fashion style like what sort of clothes they're wearing, maybe they're wearing traditional clothes, or maybe they're wearing a popular fashion trend, or personality traits like a quirk or Basically, anything that if you looked at it, 99% of the time, you would be able to relate to it as a person from that culture. Basically, every aspect of a character was intended to mean something. For example, USA's little cowlick here is meant to represent Nantucket, and his glasses represent Texas. And no, I'm not bullshitting on any of this. This was how I became so pedantic about my character designs. To me, at the time, this was the most important thing in my life. This was like the reason I was put on this earth. So I took that blog and my character very seriously. I was researching my little head off and sharing everything I found out as accurately as a 13 year old child could. This was around the time I just got a drawing tablet too. It was a Wacom bamboo tablet and I begged my parents to get one for weeks. Before that, I was pretty much drawing my sketches on paper, scanning it, and then lining it using the Photoshop line tool and coloring and shading with my laptop trackpad. Not even a mouse, bro. but. I'm so glad that my parents did end up getting that tablet for me because that was when my art journey really began. I downloaded Paint Tool Sai, which was pretty much my first serious drawing software. I started out using um, Microsoft Paint, as we all do, and I upgraded. Um, I also took drawing lessons and I kept on practicing and practicing and I'm still practicing to this day. A lot of my first artwork was actually uploaded to DeviantArt and it was mostly cartoons I liked to watch as a child like um, The Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, and a lot of Sonic as well. Yes, I also made a Sonic OC because I am a disgusting child. I I thought they were cool and I was in love with Shadow the Hedgehog, so <laughs> I don't know what that says about me now. 
Um, but please don't tell me because I don't want to know. If you guys are interested, I might revisit my Sonic OC, maybe redesign her and rewrite her backstory. I think it'll be fun to actually do that for my own stuff, so let me know if you're interested in that. But anyway, running an ask blog really taught me how to draw and how to draw fast. <laughs> you don't. Um, you gotta keep up with the amount of interactions happening and if you don't post every day, people forgot about you. So, uh, one way of like staying on top of the pile was regularly updating, even if it meant you were just posting um, like uncolored sketches like I do for most of my animatics for my Yandere simulator redesign videos but it is what it is and people were into that <laughs> i actually got to learn a lot from other artists i really admired and i adopted some of their styles into my own and i feel like i wouldn't have gotten where i am today if i'd never made that blog I still have fond memories of interacting with other Hetalia Ask blogs and making friends in the community. My blog managed to do pretty well. I think in its heyday, it managed to garner about 1,000 followers, which was a huge deal for me, and it's still a huge deal for me now. And I even got sponsored by a fashion website. But I never got paid because the payments were based off of clicks and I could never get enough people to click the link to reach that threshold. So it was still pretty awesome though. But more importantly, that was when I really started developing my art style and drawing pretty much on the regular to keep up with the amount of ass I was receiving. But because I was still in middle school at the time, it all got a bit too much for me and I unfortunately ended up deleting the account. I checked my old URL and it's being used by a different Ask Indonesia account now, so if you want to check them out, go and do that. I do still have some of the art I made for that blog and I would like to show more but essentially i saved it all on my old laptop which doesn't work anymore so unfortunately uh, these are all i have left and looking back at it i feel like in some ways i've barely improved at all or even gotten worse but maybe that's my anxiety talking i had my ups and downs while running that blog Honestly, it was a bit hard for me looking back on it because it happened during a tough period in my life, both in real life and online. Um, I feel like I've suppressed a lot of my memories from then, but I do remember snippets of random moments when I felt really excited and happy. Like when an ass blog I looked up to and admired decided to interact with my OC or when I participated in collabs and community-wide events. I also remembered painful moments where I would be confronted by people who thought I was doing a bad job or opposed my beliefs. And as a kid who was pretty much stumbling through it blindly, I didn't know how to deal with it. But at the very least, Kid Callie was passionate about what she was doing and she tried her very best. But that is the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I was trying to make this a story time but I don't know if I actually told enough of a story. Um, I hope I did. Anyway. If you guys want to see more videos like this from me, definitely hit that like button. Comment down below if you've ever heard of Hetalia or if you were a part of the Hetalia fandom, what you thought of it, if you've ever heard of Dinosaurus Gede, and which country you're from. As I was writing the script though, we actually managed to hit 25k subscribers, which is 
so unreal to me. I feel like I'm doing a whole load of nothing. But hey, if people enjoy my nonsensical rambling while watching me draw random things, then I guess I must be doing something right. Anyway, follow me on all my social media, check out my comic, because that will make me really happy, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!